Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mambo number five. What are noble gases? Well, they are the gases that form in a single column on the rightmost of the periodic table with halogens located to their left. Noble gases have many similar properties within themselves. They are grouped as noble gases because all of their orbitals, or shells, are filled with electrons, therefore making them inert. Their inertness makes it, in most natural circumstances, harder to make chemical compounds, which means it's not easy to bond to or react to other chemicals. The noble gases are also similar by the fact that they are all around the same temperature when at the liquid state. They all have low boiling temperatures, with helium having the lowest boiling point of any substance. Their densities vary based on their molecular mass. They range from helium, which has one-seventh of the density of air, to xenon, which has five times the density of air. Now, what are the names of these oh-so-famous noble gases? The names are just as special as the elements themselves. Helium comes from the Greek word helios, meaning the sun. The element was discovered by spectroscopy during a solar eclipse in the sun's chromosphere by the French astronomer Pierre-Jules Caesar Janssen in 1868. The name argon is derived from the Greek word argos for lazy or inactive because it is not combined with other elements. It was discovered in 1895 by Ramsey and Robert John Strutt from liquefied atmospheric air. Krypton derives from the Greek word kryptos for concealed or hidden. It was discovered when chemist William Ramsey and Morris William Travers liquefied atmospheric air in 1898. The name xenon derives from the Greek word xenon for the stranger. It was discovered in 1898 by Ramsey and Travers from yet another liquefied air sample. The name neon derives from the Greek word neos for new. It was discovered from its bright red but faint lines in a liquefied air sample by William Ramsey and Travers in 1898. The name radon indicates its origin from radium. It is the only radioactive noble gas. It had first been called radium emanation or just emanation with the chemical symbol EM because it was a decayed product of radium. Ramsey next suggested the name niton with the chemical symbol NT, which is Latin for shiny. It was finally changed to radon in 1923. It was discovered in 1900 by Frederick Ernest Dorn, but later isolated by Ramsey and Robert Whitley Gray in 1910. Well, that's all for the noble gases. The noble gases are great and all, but they're kind of boring. Yeah, and what's so great about your topic? A hala, hela... A halogen. What's a halogen? Well, the halogen family is the 17th group in the periodic table. They include fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and acetine. What's interesting about the halogen family is that, unlike their neighbors with noble gases, these elements are highly reactive. As halogens, all the elements under this group have seven, ba seven balanced electrons. They only need one more to complete their orbit. And they will get that electron any way they can. And because they would be willing to do anything for this electron, they have a high number of electronegativity. Well, what is electronegativity? Electronegativity describes the strength or tendency of the element to take electrons from other atoms. Fluorine, discovered in 1886 by Joseph Mosang, has the highest electronegativity. Under fluorine, in the periodic table, is the element chlorine. Chlorine, which was discovered in 1774 by Carl Scheele, was named after the Greek word chloros, meaning green. Bromine, the element under chlorine, was discovered in 1808 by Sir Humphrey Davy. Iodine, discovered in 1811 by Bernard Courtois, is located underneath, bro underneath bromine and is named after Eidos, in purple. Last but definitely not least, acetine, located in the sixth period of the periodic table, discovered in 1940 by D.R. Carson. As for the word halogen itself, it comes from the Greek word hal, meaning salt. Reactions involving elements from the halogen family usually results in salts. So if halogens are so reactive, what would happen if they were combined with an element of only one balanced electron? Let's take chlorine for example, one of the most dangerous gases on the periodic table. What if we combine chlorine with sodium, also a dangerous element? Sodium, when combined with water, reacts very aggressively. Explosion! Explosion! 
And now for a video explaining the reaction between sodium and chlorine. Surprisingly, no explosion. Somehow, when these two bad boys of the periodic table came together, they calmed down. At the subatomic level, sodium, an alkali metal, had an electron it didn't want. And chlorine, a halogen, wants desperately to grab an electron. Once the handoff was complete, both atoms wound up with full shells, making them stable and able to join together. To form a crystal compound, we can't live without sodium chloride, table salt. In conclusion, halogens are usually extremely reactive. They are the 17th group in the periodic table and like forming salt in compounds. Thank you for watching and, and have a good day.